Hey guys, this is Covalent Bond with Mr. Bond and the Science Guys, and this is Ionic Bond, his sister. So today we're going to be learning about the Tesla coil. The Tesla coil. I don't know if you guys have seen this before or heard about it, but this is a super cool electrical experiment. It was invented by someone called Nikola Tesla. Who would have guessed it? Yep, and he was a Serbian immigrant to the US, and he invented lots of the stuff that we see around, including this Tesla coil. So there are two different types of current. Uh, there's AC current, which is alternating current, and DC current, which is direct current. Direct current is something you find, say, in batteries, AC current is something you find in your wall outlet, something like that. So this is a Tesla coil, it's using AC current coming from the wall. And this is our Eiffel Tower. Yes, it is the actual Eiffel Tower. So, what I'm going to do, I'm initially just going to put it on the top, and there's a small button on here you can see. The electricity is arcing through the air to get to the metal. We know that electricity and magnetism, we say that they're kind of two sides of the same coin. So anytime you have electricity, you can have magnetism and vice versa. With the Tesla coil, if this is a negative and this is a positive, we know that opposites attract in magnets. Negatives and positives attract, and negatives and negatives... Repel. And positive and positive. They repel. So if this is a positive and this is a negative, we know that they're going to attract. And the other thing that electricity always wants to do is it wants to find its way into the ground. So it likes to jump into other things called conductors. I'm a conductor. This is a conductor. Even our table is a conductor. We put this plastic cutting board here to stop the electricity from flowing through the Eiffel Tower into the table. Mm -hmm. You wanna give it a go? Sure. Now a conductor is anything that's made of metal, water. This table underneath here is made of... So it goes into it. Now what do you think would happen when we shock the plastic cutting board? We're gonna give try. it a try. You might notice that it's a little bit softer. The electricity is not able to go quite as easily through the plastic. Now this table is really big and really metal, so it is pulling it through a little bit, but not as much as that. Next, we are going to do the same experiment. Are you ready? Yep. This should not hurt at all. Why won't it hurt you when I shock this copper pipe? Because the electricity doesn't actually have to flow through the air, travel through the air from one point to another. As it hits that point is actually when it does the damage. Go ahead. <laughs> Didn't actually hurt. So if that were to be my finger, that would hurt really badly. But because my hands are firmly gripping the copper pipe, the electricity can hit here, go down the copper pipe, diffuse into my body, and be carried down to the ground. Our bodies are actually very good conductors because we're made of about 70% water. Mm -hmm. And water is an, also a great conductor. Well, that's why they pull you out of the pool every time you have a uh, lightning strike near the pool. Mm -hmm. And even if I take this hand off, go ahead. We're gonna touch our fingers together. Did you hear that? It was a little bit of a shock. I can take my glove off so you can see it even better. You should be able to see the electricity between our two fingers in three, two, one. Pretty good. You can see me jump back because I did feel it, but it's not nearly as big of a shock as if it came directly from the Tesla coil. If we were to stand on something like a stool, that electricity would be caught in our body and it would actually shock a lot worse. Mm -hmm. All right, Covalent, what should we shock next? So I think we should look at this plasma ball we've got here. This is an attachment for the Tesla coil. Excellent. And we can see plasma through the electricity. Right. There is a vacuum, there's no air inside of this ball, and it allows the electricity to travel through my to my hand rather easily and through the glass. Cool. What's that thing? So this is a larger version. It is also another vacuum chamber, and this electricity will easily go to your fingertips and it looks rather beautiful if you take a look. Alright, so what else can we explore with the Tesla coil? So we've got some light bulbs over here. I'll grab one. We're going to start off with green and use purple in a second. Uh, this is just a regular light bulb that you might see when you look up in your lunchroom or any cafeteria. Uh, it is covered in a green plastic case only to keep the light bulb safe and give a little tint of color. 
All right, so as you can see, this side will be brighter than this side because my hands are sitting further on this side and I'm taking the electricity, go ahead. All right, I wanna have a turn with the light bulb, so go I'm gonna grab the other one. This time, I think we'll do purple. All right, so I wanna see what happens when I move my hands around. So will you go ahead and shock this light bulb for me? around the electricity is actually stopping about where my hand is so it's pulling all the way down to my hand it's getting lost a little bit been being taken out by me but a little bit does continue going on throughout the room. so why does light bulb light up good question so when the electricity goes into the end of the light bulb the electrons on the inside on the inside turn on and they start moving around like crazy the electrons are being transferred into a different kind of energy like fire or heat but they are just moving around a lot and this is actually a very efficient form of energy Yes, this will make the light bulbs last a very long time, but you may see in your lunchroom or wherever you are that the light bulbs are flickering. That may be because of a misconnection or a short circuit. Can you see how the electricity is almost there, but not quite? Here's what it looks like when it's fully connected. So as you can see, the light is fully on, it's not flickering at all, but when it's like this, it looks terrible. And that's what can make some, those fluorescent bulbs in the ceiling kind of annoying sometimes. That's all the electricity experiments we have to, for today, but there's so much more we can talk about, so don't forget to check out our next videos. We hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe.